Gardner Design Expert Shirley Bob Show is here to answer some of your questions. Our viewers recently posted on Facebook. Shirley, the first one uh, is from Michelle Steigers. Uh, she has a uh, very ga buried gas line concern. Uh, and, you know, she's digging in the city. Recently buried gas and cable lines in my front yard. The flags say I should call and ask before I dig. What should that, in would that include planting? This is Michelle, right? Yes, Michelle. Michelle, really important. Everybody also who's going to be undertaking a landscaping project, there is a number you can call. It's 811, and that goes for the whole country. And you will be connected to your local state uh, regulation agency. And what they do is they will come out and they will mark on your landscape. I think I have a picture here yep. where your gas line is, your sewer line, your electrical line, so that when you start digging for trees, you don't hit something and cause a big problem. So this is really important. Uh, the only time you don't have to worry about this type of uh, call, a dig alert, is when you're uh, little four inch plants. Right. That's okay. Right. But if you're landscaping, call your 811. All right, Cynthia Vila, and thank you for that. Sure. Uh, Cynthia Vila, uh, Vila Walker, she says, patio flower garden. I love uh, flower gardens, but have limited space in my apartment patio. Any suggestions sure. on how to turn my boring patio into a beautiful uh, flowering Yes, plant? glad you asked, because we have a perfect example here, our own patio. Now, I always show you how we put food into our patio, growing food, but you can have a beautiful flower garden. Some of the most important things to note is that there's landscape plants here in containers, not just flowers. We have a beautiful big hopsy bush here, so it looks like a landscape. We've got, uh, you know, flowers and we've got cascading succulents. We've got all types of things. So if you want a really dynamic garden in a small space, make sure to do low, medium, and high containers. And Look here, how pretty that look is. at that. Yeah, and use yeah. the vertical gardens. You love these I love towers, it. remember? I love our gardens. These three tier towers, you can get all kinds of flowers, put stuff on the wall, drape some from uh, window boxes, and that's how you do it. Okay, so Shannon Stewart, she says, I live in Arizona. The cutworms in this area have been my garden's downfall since 1983. Year after year, my seedlings and uh, producing plants fall victim to this worm. Any ideas on how to get my garden to grow to fruition yes. this year? Yes. Now we're going to take out the heavy artillery. A lot of people will use like little cups to surround their roots so that physically you can't, the cutworm can't get to it. But here's something that's really effective. It's a beneficial nematode. And what a beneficial nematode is there's millions of these tiny, tiny worms in the soil by, na by nature, but these are cultivated. And what they do is they actually will go into the body of say a cutworm, they'll enter through the mouth or an opening, and then they spew out a bacteria that starts to decay the body. I know it doesn't sound good, right? Oh but it works so well. <laughs> oh. And then once this happens, it starts to degrade and it dies, more of these little nematodes are born. 350,000 of them can emerge from one dead cutworm about eight days later. And guess what? They keep going and they attack the next one and the next one. Wow. They kill gnats, fleas, ticks, beneficial nematodes are your friend. Okay, do we have time for more? Okay, so uh, Sandy Jurgen, she says, why can't I find impatience anymore? Don't be impatient. No, really, <laughs> you know what's going on? There is a plague right now that has hit the whole world. Impatience have been real popular flowers. You can see the picture here. Mm -hmm. You can probably recognize it. But what is happening is like a mold. It's a it's a fungus actually, and you can see underneath yeah, it's very powdery. I've never seen those. Yeah. So if you have some old impatience at home and you see this, you must rip them out because what's going to happen is that mold will live in your soil for seven eight years and oh it's going to be a problem. Shirley.